Maverick Traders, welcome out to your currency recap. It is April 22nd. Nice to see you all. So we're going to take a look at meaningful news in the markets, a little bit of a reversal being signaled. We'll look at our currency baskets, find velocity, find what's moving, and then highlight our very best ideas. Disclaimer. This video was created for professional Forex and crypto traders. Maverick Currencies is a proprietary trading firm that employs professional traders around the world. Our traders trade firm capital and keep 70 to 80 percent of profits they generate. All trades and analysis in this video are for professional traders only. If you are interested in becoming a professional Forex and currency trader for Maverick, click the apply button in the video description. Let's break down what happened today. So today was kind of interesting in that we had a reversal of what had been transpiring. Notably, gold and the volatility index both fell sharply lower. Now, gold's chart shows there was an exhaustion, massive volume, uh, likely deterioration, no surprise there. The volatility index fell sharply today, and that suggests if you look at where these big red candles are in the VIX, that usually correlates with a market bottom, just a short-term bottom, not necessarily the bottom, but just a, an area where we can bounce. So a little bit of a risk on shift where we had been selling off sharply, these signal that we should get a little bit of a sustained bounce. Now, as we look at currencies, it was also risk on. You had the Aussie, the Kiwi, and the CAD continues to be strong. The CAD is just the best currency out there. Uh, like we've been talking about, it is the strongest of those risk on currencies. The S&P uh, up just shy of 1%. Crypto with a little bit of a bounce back up 3 But gold was the story, I felt like. Gold had been rallying for some time, down 2.5%, a big reversal off of those highs. Now, if we dig deeper into crypto, Bitcoin and Bitcoin Cash, the outperformers, Bitcoin still seems like the safest area if you want to play upside in crypto. As we look at markets, you'll notice the trend has rolled over. We're now below the 20, below the 50. The slope is still kind of sideways in those moving averages, but we're emerging into a downward trend. So it's not going to take long, a couple of days from now, and we will be seeing a bearish crossover. This 20 will keep going down and likely cross below the 50, which is another bearish sign. But as I said, the market seemed to be suggesting that we should get a little bit of back and fill, a little bit of a bounce. Now, maybe not that big of a bounce, but a couple of days of, of rally and consolidation in here is what the VIX and gold and some of these other markets are suggesting. So there should be a little bit more follow through to the upside overall. I'll call it consolidation. Not a huge bounce, but a at least a brief uh, stopping of the downward decline. Now, as we look at the calendar, we've got some CPI data coming out of Australia Tuesday night. We've got advanced GDP in the U.S. Thursday morning. We've got the Bank of Japan with their, mo their uh, monetary policy statement and press conference. And then here in the U.S., we'll be watching... The core PCE, this is the Fed's preferred gauge on inflation, and that comes out Friday morning. Inflation continues to be a hot-button topic. It's one of those things that is really driving the Fed's decision-making. And remember, markets were anticipating a lot of Fed cuts that just have not materialized, and it remains to be seen whether the Fed will cut this year, and if they do, how many times. We were taking the under on the market's expectations, and Maverick has been completely right about that. Now, currency analysis, like we said, Aussie is strong. You also have some strength in, in the Kiwi and the Aussie starting to emerge. The weaker components, I mean, pound, yen, euro, Swiss franc, these are areas that... Uh, rewind back a month or so ago, I really liked the euro and the pound and such, but we talked about that really there was a rotation uh, likely to occur, and the CAD has just been on fire. Uh, it also fits with that commodity play, we, like we had talked about with gold and oil doing really well. It was just a great 
place to, to be looking for upside and probably continues to be just that. Don't be surprised if the U.S. dollar is not done on the upside yet, but it's certainly consolidating right now. So possible trades. As we dig in and look at some of these charts together, we'll start with the Japanese yen. And look, it's just in a downward trend. And going into the Bank of Japan meeting this week, we're breaking to new lows in the yen currency. So uh, continued weakness there. Looking at the U.S. dollar, again, it's high basing. But that's pretty powerful given how far the U.S. dollar has gone. So USD, although it's neutral right now for velocity, it's definitely one for a bullish watch list for opportunity. Swiss franc also consolidating uh, a little bit of a bear rally type pattern. The euro in a consolidation. The British pound, however, has broken down. So if you're looking for new Fresh ideas to the downside. The British pound has just come out of a prolonged base and broken sharply lower. Uh, the same way I'd be watching for opportunities to buy U.S. dollars, one of the new emergent ideas would be shorting British pound when opportunities present themselves. The CAD is just fantastic up near the highs once again. And Aussie and Kiwi have started to bounce back recently. So they've been in a little bit downward trends, but starting to bounce back uh, a bit as we look at it here. Bitcoin, uh, Bitcoin Cash, Ethereum, they all have a similar chart, which is it's not really a trustworthy chart. Notice the downward sloping moving averages and the fact that we're below them. That leads me to believe that these are bear rallies. Now, could the low be in? Possible. But it's not really the type of chart you want to aggressively buy into because it's very common that you have broken down, you make a lower low, you rally, you set a lower high, and then you sell off again. So uh, they're not necessarily a short, but I'm not so sure that the upside uh, continuation can be trusted. If you're going to buy, wait for a little bit more stabilization, more of an uptrend to start to evolve before it seems you know, safe to do so in aggressive fashion. So for the rest of this week, we're going to continue to highlight our best ideas, continue to look for currency pairs that stand out, and we'll make note of them to you. Hope you enjoyed this currency recap. Have a great week. We'll see you next time.